But man, it is an honor. It is a privilege to share with you guys today. You know, I'm so excited because today it's like your life can change. Your life and your and the destiny of your children and your children's children that are yet unborn can be forever different because you made a decision. You made a decision to make a difference, just to simply have courage where others fear. You know, that was the first thing. Like, I, I love when Adrian talks. I, I get so excited. It is such a privilege to be on this call with you guys. And, you know, as I think about what was on my heart to share, it was like Adrian and I talked earlier, and he put some slides together. And I'm going to, if with his blessing, I'm going to say that I will come on tomorrow, the next day, a week from now. And I will go right through those slides and do the training on those slides that we prepared. But in the last half hour, as I was preparing and, and, and thinking about you, you on this call specifically, my team, our team, the team, this team. Because, see, everybody on this call is vertical to me and Adrian. And so as I look at you, I said, what is on my heart? to share with you at this point in time. And the thing that just kept hitting me, because I, I love to teach. I love to go through points. But tonight, I want to talk to you about hope. I want to talk to you about your why. I grew up always thinking we would talk the dream, your dream. What's your dream? Maybe you call it your why. If you read Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill called it your burning desire. My dad says, what are your family needs? But sometimes what I want you to know is that sometimes things, they do get a little rough. Right now, we're in the middle of COVID. If you go years back, I'm sure there was people that got wigged out when it was World War II. Maybe even you go further back and it was the Spanish flu. There's always seems to be something that's causing us that can derail us. And so what I want you to do is say, why am I doing this? Why did I choose to be part of this team? Why am I prioritizing my choices to build this. You know, I've always believed in God and I believe that dreams come from God and I believe that God would not be so cruel as to put dreams in our heart and then provide no vehicle for those dreams to come true. If God's a God of abundance and all things are possible, if all things are possible, then do you think you could go 5K, 25K? But what is it that's, when, when we have COVID, that's, I wish we didn't. I'm grateful that we've grown through COVID. People are still joining through COVID. But do I really honestly think I would be bigger if we had never had COVID? Of course. I say this humbly, but do you think I'm better live in front of you in South Africa at a big hotel, magic on stage, or in my little office center and on a Zoom call? Good, better, best. But what we have is we have what we have. Many times we just, we, we have the hand we've been dealt. If you, it, it, sometimes we get an ace. Sometimes we get a two. Sometimes it's a jack. I mean, it's just, you, we, we have different things at different times. But I'll tell you a couple of things that have me doing this. Why I still do it. Because people ask me a lot. Because, heck, we started, I was 17 years old, as Adrian said. And all I've ever done is this. I've never had a job in my life. All our homes paid for, cash. It's like cars, cash. The Bible says, oh, no man, but to love one another. We're supposed to love each other. But let's be debt free. 
because I don't think we can have any other kind of freedom until we're first financially free. So the first thing we want to do is get debt free so that we don't have money be our choices, influence our choices. Can we go on a vacation? Where can we go? How long can we stay? Can we go out to dinner? Where can we go? What can we eat? The church wants a donation. I got to think, how much can I give? Do I have any to give? Because I got a house payment coming due. I've got a car payment coming due. All the stress and worry because we chose to get into debt. Well, if we chose to get into debt, we can make a choice to get out of debt, especially when we have this business. Because everything it takes to be successful can be learned. And with Adrian and me, you've got two of the best teachers on the planet willing to teach you for free. Man, I can't even go get my taxes done for free. I go talk to my CPA and he says, hey, what do you think about that? I go, I don't want to spend the 50 bucks to answer the question. It's a joke. <laughs> just, uh, just that you're on the clock. Here, man, how many nights do we stay up late and just talk? Because we love each other. Because we love each other. But as many people as there are on this call, that's how many different dreams there can be. You can build you may need some money right now. Like me when I was brand new and I was in a little $125 Volkswagen, living at home. But I did have a dream because I wondered, I didn't, I didn't want to just be born, live mediocre and die. I for sure didn't want my children to be born, live mediocre and die because of the teaching and training they received in the home from me, their dad. But I remember, so my dad got started in 1975. My goodness, can you believe that? Does this industry have stay power? He's still getting money. My dad's still alive and doing great. But I'm telling you, that's over 45 years. Do you think sometimes it didn't matter? And I know you're in South Africa, but it didn't matter if it was a Democrat president or Republican president. Hey, the Twin Towers got hit. Hey, there was an Iraq war. There was an Afghanistan war. Hey, sometimes the stock market was going up. Sometimes the stock market was going down. Sometimes real estate was going up, booming. Sometimes it was crashing. But he stayed the course. Stayed the course. So right now we have a little hiccup. Maybe it's a little kind of a big hiccup, but it'll pass. It all depends on this is time we can actually use our time to, to develop our skills, get better, read more, listen more, associate more. We increase by association. This is a time that we can come out of this. The people that will plug in and give their personal best. You see, I wasn't there when God started handing out personal bests. I don't know why one kid can throw a baseball further than another. I don't know why one girl can sing better than another. I just know that my personal best is good enough to achieve my dreams because God wouldn't put a dream in my heart if I didn't have the ability to go get it. Same with you. Same with you. So you can do it. I believe the ones that stay the course and work it, man, we're going to come out of this thing and boom, boom. And it's going to be the biggest explosion that's ever been seen in the history of planet Earth. Prosperity explosion. You're going to be a part of it. Well, what makes me go? I want you to be thinking as I talk about me a little bit. I really want you to be thinking about you. What makes you get up in the morning? What makes you do this? When I said, I started to say when I was in a $125 Volkswagen, I was really quite motivated. I needed money. I saw a white Mercedes and I wanted it. I didn't have a Mercedes. I wasn't even talking about Rolls Royces and Ferraris and all that, Maseratis. I just thought, man. But was it possible for me? I could go to an event and see it was working for other people, but could it work for me? I was trying to figure out if, if it could work for me. You know, I was driving with my dad one day changed my life because as I was growing up, I don't ever remember my dad being at any of my ball games or any of my anything. He was just never there. 
My dad was never there. Oh, my mom said he loved me. I'd say, I'd cry sometimes. I'd say, if he loves me, why is he in any of my games? We won the championship and my dad wasn't there. Lots of things I did and my dad wasn't there. Now, let me tell you, because my mom says, but he's working. See, my dad was taught to get a good education and get a good job. So he went and got a, his college degree. Then he got a master's degree. Then he got a PhD. Then he got a second PhD. My dad was a university professor. So we weren't poor, but he was teaching all day. Now, what does a university professor do if he's a hard worker and wants to make more money? He works all day teaching classes. Well, then he teaches night classes. So my dad was always gone during the day. Now he's gone all the night. Well, what does he do if he wants to make more money? He joined the Air National Guard on weekends. He was a chaplain, a preacher. So he's a good man. He just was working all the time. I was really crying when I first started my high school football because I wanted this new pair of cleats, these new shoes. And they were only like 20 bucks, but my mom and dad didn't have the money. So they gave me my older brother's shoes. But my brother was a lineman. This might not make sense to you because it's American football, but I wanted those shoes. And all of a sudden I saw my dad out refereeing the game. I wondered, how do you get time to referee the game? They, and, and I remember him at dinner saying, I hope they give me a varsity game. But he was new, so they gave him a junior varsity game. So I wasn't refereeing my game. It was the game before. I saw my dad running up and down the field the, day be, the game before. I thought, huh? My mom says, well, they, they gave him like $15. And he refereed because he knew if he refereed, he could get me my new shoes. I love my dad. He just wasn't at my games because he was working all the time, working all the time, working. Then one day my dad came home. I was in bed because it was only like six o'clock in the morning. My dad had gone to a meeting the night before. He came home, he used to wake me up sometimes by throwing me a football and waking me up. I mean, I saw my dad, when I say he didn't come to my stuff, he was working, but he was still loving and I still adored him and wanted to grow up and be just like him. All I wanted to be was as cool as my dad. He came in one day And he threw me something. Now, I thought it was a football, so I reached up, and it went right through my hands and nearly broke my nose. It was a quart of a product. It was called LOC. And I looked at it, and I said, what's this lock stuff? He said, it's LOC. LOC stood for liquid organic cleaner. He said, that's LOC, and it's going to make us free. Him and my mom had gone to a meeting late the night before because he had to go after night classes. So he saw it at about 10 o'clock. He said they came home and they saw circles all over the ceiling. They couldn't. And so they called their sponsor the next morning. They said, we can't even go to work before we're registered. We, this is the way God wants us to be free. And they got in. And I watched him duplicate his income in less than seven months. What had taken him 30 years with all that education. Then all of a sudden, my dad was at everything because he was able to buy his time. See, I remember when he started making some money and he just did no more night classes. Now he still taught all day, but no night classes. He was free every night. He was at all my games and he was doing meetings at night. I remember, how does a university make, make more money? He teaches summer school. I remember one time he said, we're gonna go on a vacation. I, remember, I don't even remember a long vacation. And all of a sudden he says, I said, well, how long are we going? 10 days? He goes, all summer. Because I'm not teaching summer school. I'm free. And we took off in the car and we went everywhere, man. And he was doing events, doing meetings everywhere too. But we were together. I was with my dad. I was the happiest I'd ever been in my life. 
My dad told me one day, he says, you know, I wasn't there a lot when you were doing stuff younger. He says, but just know that the passenger seat in my car is always open for you. Nothing I do, you can't be to. You're with me everywhere you want to go, you can be. Man, it was like from a from a guy that wasn't at my games, and now he was at all my games. He even came to practices. I said, no, Dad, don't come to practice to see if we could kind of cheat at the wind sprints at the end of practice because we keep an eye on the coach. And when he's looking, we run fast. When he's not looking, we sort of loaf. My dad's on one side, my coach is on the other. I can't, I can't look at both at the same time. Oh, my gosh, I have to work hard. But the thing was, one day, my dad said he was going to do an event. I said, I'll go. Now, here's a part of the story that I want to tell you. As I grew up, and I had my dad on one of our Zoom calls just the other day, verifying the story. I wanted him to because I told the story so many times. I said, Dad, tell him it's true, huh? Dad, it's true, huh? Because I never remember my dad not. He went every month and got prescription, not just stuff for his upset stomach. He was drinking prescription for his upset stomach. Had to go to the doctor every month. Now, I mean, we had this white milky stuff in the bedroom, in the, in the kitchen. It was in the closet. I mean, in the, in the bathroom. It was, it was everywhere. He kept it in the car, and he never measured it in the spoon. He'd just drink it out of the bottle. He always, I always remember him having an upset stomach, and he had the prescription for it all the time. Well, I say that part of the story because here now back to the real story. My dad invited me to go with him. And I started driving with my dad. And you know, I was just in high school. I was a high school student. And as we were driving, I start fidgeting. I'm always full of energy. And I opened the glove box and there was no white milky stuff. There was no white milky stuff. I said, dad, dad, you don't have your stuff. If you pull into Walgreens or something, I know it's not prescription, but it'll help. He says, I don't. I don't drink it anymore. I go, what? My whole life you've drunk it. Now you don't drink it anymore? He says, no. Ever since I joined this team, I've never had to use it anymore. I thought to myself, what? A miracle from God or something? Like he drank it his whole life, then he joins our business, and then he doesn't need it anymore? I said, why, Dad? Why? Just a boy and his dad in a car driving. And my dad looks at me and said, hope. Hope. He said, before this business, I had no hope of ever living my family's dream, never living a dream. I never had hope. I was squelching my dreams to meet my income. Longer I did it, the more I realized I'd never live our dreams. I'd never have your mother in the home she dreamed of living in. Hope. Once I joined this team, I had hope. And I've never needed it again. I looked at my dad. I said, Dad, that's what I'm going to do with my life. I want to do that with my life. I want to give hope to people every day of my life for the rest of my life. I promise you I will give hope to people. As long as God gives me breath, I'm going to be trying my best to give hope to people in their struggles. Hope that it's gonna get better. Hope, hope! That was it. I've tried to live that promise. I made another promise to a lady one time. People say, why do you build this business with passion? When you don't need the money anymore. If I never did another Zoom call, I don't need the money ever again. I can live just great the rest of my life. But this lady was my mom and she did get a cancer and it was kind of a slow death. She was still friendly and then all of a sudden she was bedridden and she couldn't get out of bed. 
but she still wanted me to come talk to her and she loved it. I liked to go talk to her too. I'd go sit beside her bed and I'd talk to her. I'd say, and you know, no matter what we talked about, because I always loved talking. I'd like to ask her questions, you know, about stuff and she'd tell me and we'd talk for a little bit. She'd always ask about the business. And, but at the end, she'd always say, but promise me, Lennon, you're the magic one. You're the one that's gone crown. You're the, you're the magic. Thousands of people listen to you. She said, promise me that you won't get so rich that you quit having that spark, that passion, that desire, that you'll keep the torch going. See, because she had given her life for 20-something, 30 years, building a team. And she was worried that the people, she loved the people. Products don't move people. People move products. We'll come out with different products. If you love our products right now, awesome. We'll come out with more. The fact is, we're people. And I said, I promise, Mom. I promise. I'd go talk to her again, and she'd talk about all kinds of stuff. I'd say stuff like, what? tell me about Dad, and tell me about Grandpa. I'd ask stuff. But always she'd end, promise me, Lennon, promise me that you'll never stop, that you'll keep the magic, keep blessing lives. What we started as a family, you'll keep it going. I promise, Mom, I promise. Even when we knew her hours were numbered at the very end, she talked to every child. She talked to, told them private stuff. I wasn't in there exactly when some of the private stuff. But then I went in to say my goodbyes. And, and once again, on her last few breaths, she looked up and could hardly talk. She said, promise me one more time that all our people will be taken care of, that you will keep the dream alive because you'll get so fabulously wealthy and you'll just, that some people start golfing. They just stop helping people. They stop doing three-way calls because they don't need to do three-way calls. I reached over and I kissed her forehead. I said, I promise you, mom. So people ask me sometimes now, they say, why you still build it with so much passion? It's very simple. I have promises to keep. I have promises to keep. Why are you building? Because if we let our brains go in and out every day, oh, it's COVID. Oh, now this is a problem. Oh, this is a problem. Oh, that person. That's why I always edify most. The most free person I have access to. I'm going to edify the person that's helping me. I'm going to edify mostly the person that's in my corner. Sometimes people edify people. When are they going to do a one-on-one -on -one for you? When are they going to do a three-way call for you? I'm not saying they're not good people, but you're creating a hero out of somebody that's not in your corner every day. They're for you. Who's talking to you on the phone all the time? Who's giving their life to help your life be better? That's who I edify. That's who I edify most. Oh, I can love everybody. I can love everybody. But I'm going to make sure that my best friends as Adrian was saying earlier, we want to associate. We increase by association. Who's given their life to help you win? That's who I'm edifying most, always. That's who's going to be there for me. They're showing with their life, with their time. They're there for me. How often do I talk to them? Are they willing to spend? Because we all only have 24 hours in a day. I found out a long time ago, if I'm in Dallas, I'm not in Denver. If I'm in South Africa, I'm not in Japan. I can't be everywhere. 
I can't be talking to everybody. So if I'm talking to somebody, that means I'm not talking to somebody else. It's important to choose who I'm building relationships with. So you're choosing your best friends. That's who I'm talking about. That's who I'm edifying. But you know, I guess our time is getting up, but I, I wanted to talk about hope and you. So you think the rest of today about what is it that's really making you hang on to your dream? And, and remember why we joined this team. Because you see the loyalty, it's this team that's going to take us to freedom. It's this team that's going to take us to freedom. There's a lot of companies with good pay plans. There's a lot of companies with good products. I mean, I can find a good product at almost any company. I can, whether it's networking or not networking, I can go to the store and find a good product. But where's the team that's given their life to your dream coming true? That's the loyalty. That's the team. That's why everything's the team and the dream. You got a dream and we got a team to help your dream come true. What team are you a part of outside this that's helping your dream come true? See, that's what's important. Your dream is coming true. What team is helping your dream come true? That's huge. I'm just going to end with one little story and then I want to have Adrian come back and I just... I love being with you guys, but I'm grateful for Adrian. I'm grateful to surround myself with men like him. I'm grateful to be with others of you as I get to know you better. But I remember a little story because in the beginning I was not that much money and I was trying to be a leader and show my upline that I was a goer and a doer. I had these two friends that were, I played college sports with and they were living up. It's a, it's a state. It would be like saying Johannesburg and Cape Town, you know, only it was Utah and Idaho, a state above. And I didn't have much money. So it was a big deal for me to put gas in and go. But they promised that we're going to have a bunch of people in the room. A bunch of people in the room. So I drove all the way, like several hours. And, you know, I got there, and they didn't have anybody. They had some girls over, and they said, let's go to the movie. You want to go to the movie with us? I said, man, I'm coming to build our dreams. We got a team, a team. Everything's a team. I was discouraged, man. And I started driving home and I had driven for a couple hours and I was just about to the Utah Idaho border and I was crying and I just, I pulled off of the road. I pulled off and drove out in the field and I just parked out in the middle of the field. I got out of my car. I got up on the hood, leaned up against the windshield. Man, I was down. I was discouraged. My business wasn't booming. Because, you know, we join, we think, oh, my friends will join. My friends weren't joining. And I was frustrated. I figured if all my friends would join for sure. It's a simple concept. We just share. Costs us nothing to open our mouth. It's free to open our mouth. We just have to have courage where there's fear. And so I sat there and I started crying. I guess I had a conversation with God. I said, man, this thing's not working. Why, why, why? You want me to do this? It's all I'm going to do. I gave up pro football, other things. I'm doing this. And I was just talking away, crying and talking, praying, crying, talking, praying, crying, talking. Well, I got back in my car and I started driving. And I'll show you today, there's this little gas station out in the middle of nowhere, about an hour and a half from our home. And it was like after midnight. I pulled into this gas station to put a couple of dollars in, because that's how I did it back in the day. Never filled up the tank. It was a couple bucks here and there. 
And I pulled into this gas station after midnight out in the middle of nowhere, not in a major city. It's like a truck stop gas station, a truck stop type gas station, not in the middle of a city. And so I pulled in and I started to put some gas in my little car. So I never paid attention to the only other car that pulled up. One other car pulled into that gas station at the exact same time. Well, I didn't pay much attention until I put the gas cap back on my car and I looked up at the only other man standing there. And I said, Dad, what are you doing here? I think that was a coincidence. My dad had a feeling. Maybe it came because I was in the farmer's field on the hood of my car crying. Well, I went over and I hugged my dad. I started crying. I said, dad, I don't know if this is going to work for me. And here's what my dad said. Because he said, you're having trouble with belief. He said, do you believe this will work for me? I said, Dad, I already know it works for you. You've already quit your job. You go places and wherever you go, people listen to you. It's me I don't know if it'll work for. I know it'll work for you. He says, if we work closer together, do you believe it'll work for us? Now, see, I've been trying to show him my leadership by not really working with him. Although I was working with him, going to the meetings, but I meant I was trying to show him that I was a leader. He said, every time you talk to anybody, use my credibility. Let's work closer together. I remember leaving that gas station. My dad pulled out first. And for the next hour and a half, I followed those two little taillights home that night. I followed those two little taillights home that night. And I followed those two little taillights all the way to personal financial freedom for me and thousands of people around the world. I thank God for a dad who lived his life Worthy, had taillights worthy to follow. Are you living your life so your taillights are worthy for people to follow all the way to freedom? Freedom, freedom. So there's another night we'll talk and We'll go through teaching because I like teaching the eight step pattern. I like teaching basics and principles and how do we make a list and how do we define our dream or how do we follow up, show the plan, all those things. I love teaching that stuff and we'll do it. But today, I hope I helped you with belief. I hope I helped you with hope. I hope I really helped you stick with this team. I hope I helped you stick with your dream. Your dream. Your dream. Because there's challenges out there now. And we either win, we either gonna step up on top of those challenges and win, or they're gonna beat us. Well, they're not going to beat me. They're not going to beat me. Would I rather build with no COVID? Absolutely. But it's the hand we're dealt right now. But I know with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. I am a child of God. And I am endowed with the seeds of greatness. You are a child of God. And you are endowed with the seeds of greatness.
And you, my friend, were born to win. Little challenges aren't gonna derail us. We're a team.